Hello, in this video we're going to look at the integration of a four-year series and uh, let's jump right in. So assume that f of x is integrable from this period and has corresponding four-year series. And if the four-year series is integrated term by term, the result converges to the original integral of f of x dx. Now notice if we integrate this term by term, here we're going to get a0 over 2x. And then since this is a sum, we can do it term by term. So this is going to be, this is a constant. So it's an times, you know, sine of nx over n. And this is minus bn, you know, because of the inter integral of sine goes to minus sine of nx over n. Anyway, so that's that's what we're we want to show that that term by term converges to this. So now if well as a reminder with each of these coefficients a n and b n is this integral. And we've shown that in several videos. You can look at F1 in our series we're on F9, that these are true, Bn is this integral, and we solve this using the concept of uh, orthogonality and an, uh, an appropriate inner product for that. Now let's let g of x be this integral from 0 to x. So now, whenever you're proving something, it's like how far back do you go? Um, and we're going to assume that you can look this up or you know it. Now since f is integrable, and this is a constant, so this function is integrable, and then when you integrate from 0 to x, you can show that, that g of x is continuous and it's a bounded variation. Now bounded variation doesn't simply mean that there's some number that bounds it. Bounded variation also has to do with how many oscillations it has and how many wiggles. And so, um, you know, it deals with taking the, you know, a partition of your, your space and evaluating it at each partition point and then looking at the differences and adding them up and it needs to be finite. That's essentially what bounded variation is. But we're going to assume that that this is continuous and bound and, and of bounded variation, and it is. Now, g of zero is zero, and you can see by the integral sign. Now, since f has a period of two, then g of x has a period of two pi, um, two pi. And so, if this goes out past two pi, then it starts repeating. And so that means that g of 0 is equal to g of 2 pi, but we just said g of 0 is 0, so g of 2 pi is 0. And now by Jordan's condition, which we're going to prove in a later video, I want to say f13 or f14, that since it's uh, continuous and of bounded variation, then the four-year series for g of x converges to g of x. And this is Jordan's condition, um, f, I'm going to say 13. So now if we create a, a four-year series for g of x, it looks like this, right? Where the constants are determined by, you know, this orthogonality property. But let's look, let's solve for these CKs and DKs. So if we look at this explicitly, it's, it's this, and let's solve it by integration by parts where u is gx and dv is cosine of kx. And then we plug those into this function, or to the, pro, the formula. And notice that the sine of pi and the sine of 0 is 0. So this goes away, this piece. And we're left with this. But the way we define g of x, you know, the derivative of g of x is just this inner piece here. 
So if we replace g of x with what it, you know, it should be, it's this. Now let's take this sign into both and integrate two pieces of that. And we, we get this. So now let's do this one first because sine is orthogonal to the number one, so this goes to zero. Or you can just integrate it and you'll show that it's zero. Um, here, if you take the one over pi and this, that's what we were calling BK. So this is equal to minus BK over K. Now we can do the same, so this is CK. Now we can do, we can solve for DK, which is part of the Fourier series for G of X, which is this. We use integration by parts, and then we get this. On the previous page, we showed that g of 0 is 0 and g of 2 pi is 0. So this goes away when you plug in those quantities. And we're left with this. Uh, plug in the appropriate g of x, and then, um, which is this. Then multiply that in, integrate both. The second piece goes to 0, so we're just left with the first piece. But if you take the 1 over pi in this, that's a k. And then it's over k because that constant stays the same. So now let's substitute these back into the Fourier series for g of x. And we get this. And so um, now this is sort of reverse. So in the first form that we had the cosine first. And so this is c k, which we said was minus b k. And then this is a k um, sine of kx, and they're all and they're both over k. But now let's solve for c zero over two. So let's let x equal zero. So we know that's zero, and these are all zero, and this is one. So we're left with minus the sum, infinite sum from b k over k. So when we back solve for c over two, we get this sum here. So we can plug this into here, and it's they're both infinite sums, so we can combine them. And then we can group, well, and it's over k, so we can put it all over k. And then we can group these bk constants together. And that's what we do here. Now we're almost finished. So if we look at the uh, g of x, which is this right here which is actually this okay but if you if you were to integrate this into two pieces it would be this so if we take this and substitute it in for this whole thing and then then add this to the other side we get this but if we were to just integrate and, and so these two things equal if we integrate f of x you know, from zero, to, well, can't say, you know, if we integrate f from zero to some number x, so um, it's, it is equal to this. We've just shown it. But the fascinating thing about this is this is what we'd get if we, if, uh, if we integrated the original Fourier series for f term by term. And so we're finished. So this, we, are, we know that you know, this is g of x, and these are equal, and so this has to equal this, but that's a term-by-term -term integration. So remember on the first page, I said if you integrate the x 0 over 2, you get, you know, that x, and then if you integrate, you know, the cosine, you get the, you know, sine of this over, k, you know, k, and anyway, so it's the same. So um, you can integrate a four-year series. So anyway, that's all I have for today. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Uh, please like it if you did. Subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.